Well, Carthage seems to be a little behind in their plans all the time. This turn instead of last, they use this leader, the visual line command, to pull their light infantry forward. Now, again, I haven't flipped it over. Uh, that's just because I don't want to do the mechanics of it. I can remember that. Uh, now, I'm ignoring these routed units. My plan is for this guy or maybe one of the other Carthaginian leaders to go rally them. The guy who was commanding them, uh, Mr. Replacement, was incapable of having a good chance of rallying the forces. Whereas he's got a pretty, he, he could, could issue the light command automatically because he's got Carthaginian command rules. Over here, we're seeing the Cav uh, engagement begin to develop. And the Romans slid forward and the Numenidians just kind of faded back. Um, unwilling to face the Roman Cav charging, they want the first attack. And then the Lancers came sliding forward, slammed into the flank in one, hit the other unit here. They didn't get a continuation. They would have taken it had they ha been able to, because they could have just wrapped around and just started wiping these guys out, making it easier for the Numenidians to then outnumber the other Cav. Um, but yeah, I really feel like Carthaginian cav superiority is just such a power. Their lighter cav is so much better than the Roman cav in general. Uh, we'll see uh, how much of an effect that's going to have. There's a big flank back here if that gets broken open. But you have velites to kind of try to screen it and, and a lot of extra velites. The Legion wants to push forward as hard as it can up that hill. Marcus here launched his uh, Velites. Now he's kept a, a flank like I was talking about to protect against any Cav incursions on that side. He's going to move the, well, the Romans are going to move the Legionary units. Kind of under the protection of the Velites there. Up here they just moved forward and threw some missiles. But once they hit uh, the hill here, they actually engaged with uh, the mainly Carthaginian lights, I think all lights, some of them the very good lights, and they did surprisingly well actually. They smashed through and have a line uh, to here. These three units got through. They've got one there and then another one sna snapped through here. You see the routed units back there. And now Marcus got a uh, continuation and he's going to throw this other little line forward as well um, of his ones which he didn't quite get to uh, you know that didn't get to advance last turn he counted on one location for almost all of them up here we've got kind of a scattering and a breaking of the line as he's uh, pushing forward that's not going to be able to be easily fixed uh, maybe these guys can connect up a little bit but right now it doesn't really happen I haven't made that attack which I should let me take care of that as well. And the follow-up attack on this flank, well, nowhere near as effective. A couple of routed units there. we got to check for Marcius, see if he gets a continuation again. And he does not. He gets a big enough, big old nine, which could be who knows what. Ah, uh, that's going to allow for the Carthaginians to activate a force that they wouldn't otherwise get a chance to. Now, that's kind of a, a weird situation. Because they've only got a couple of things. I think I've got to go over with the Cav uh, and maybe try to rally. Or, or Oh, remember, I was going to try to use that additional Cav unit. So I may push the Cav far forward and try to wipe out some of those other Cav there. And the little Cav uh, charge that that engendered uh, routed a couple of the Roman Cav. Another one's knocked over here. It does leave things kind of open for these guys to move forward. Uh, but... I want to get that cap battle resolved fast because I think that's to the Carthaginians' advantage if they can get their cap coming down and threatening the Roman flank. That'll change the tenor of the battle more quickly. Uh, and now I think we're back on another Roman command because they have all the crappy leaders at this point, the three-point leaders. Uh, this guy should be flipped over. I have used him. It's a hard thing to keep in mind when I'm not flipping all the counters so much, but I just want to reduce the mechanics as much as possible. All right. And back here, the uh, Roman Cav took on the Lancers that were a little overextended. But it's kind of funny. One of the Roman Cav went charging up to hit this guy in the back, 
and routed on approach and just turned around and came back. Uh, otherwise, they had kind of mixed success. I mean, they hit in both cases, but didn't manage to route anything and didn't manage to make any real change there. All right, on to, I guess, the main Roman line. I gotta figure out. Yeah, I think I wanna bring it up on the hill, but here's the problem. If I do, that triggers the release of the guys from the camp. Uh, I kind of have to, but it just it feels to me like, wow, I haven't pushed things as far as I could. But there's also the time limit, and the time limit is what makes me want to keep pushing forward with them. So the Romans uh, pushed forward with their main line, Hastarte, and some cohorts. They drove away most of the remainder of this. You can see there's only one unit kind of facing with its no-missile marker towards the Romans. The rest are all routed units charging away. The continuation was obtained by, uh, yeah, sorry about the lighting here. I'm not sure how to cope with it. I turn on lights and it doesn't quite work. Uh, by this tribute Antonius, but Hanno trumped in up at the fort because the fort's now able to be active because the Roman legions have moved on to the level 4 hexes. And that means that, uh, well, they started moving units. I've got just one in-column marker here uh, out of the fort. Their plan is to leave with everything as, po as easily as they can. But the Romans are going to try to press as hard as they can to prevent the Carthaginians from getting their army off the map. All right, we'll see what happens. So now, in all this darkness, we get to see uh, some image, I think, of what the actual battle is like. And yeah, I'm just standing in the sun to prevent the light from being too annoying, but it's kind of difficult here. I should pull my shades, I guess. Uh, the cav, the Roman cav has largely been knocked out of its advanced position. There's still some back here. These guys routing, maybe they can get recovered. But there's just a couple back here and they've really been uh, heavily hit. We had some trumping going on, Scipio trumping to prevent Massinissa from uh, exploiting further. And then uh, He's up here, has Drupal. Uh, not here, but up here. Uh, trumping Scipio to prevent Scipio from rallying or improving the, mar the tactical quality of too many of his troops. He rallied what he could. He's got the Velites here. For the most part, the Roman army is in pretty good shape still. But it's a little tired and a little cold and wet. And <laughs> they would like, you know, to have towels or whatever Scipio provides for them. Uh, now we got the routing uh, lights and yeah, I can't really point, but the routing lights and, and uh, skirmishers running back there. There's still a line holding here, sort of, but it doesn't look like it's going to last very long. Meanwhile, Carthage is trying to pop units out. They've got heavies. Uh, they force marched out to try to uh, provide a little bit of screen. These guys have to get out fast and they're, they're not really managing it and I'm getting the phalanxes in place. Really though, the problem is when do you break and run and when do you try to stand? Right now, obviously everything's just open. If they can, you know, secure their escape, I think, with just the mediums and lights. Uh, kind of, because once they route, you can rally them and then take them out and they get a lot more movement that way. So. They might still get a significant number of those mediums and lights if if they, if they wait for that. Anyway, uh, we'll see if the Romans can catch that. Their troops are not entirely, uh, you know, happy in their current situation. They're they're fatigued. They've been pushed hard, and up pursuit is gonna gonna hurt it. not real hard eh? I mean just going through the water is all they've really suffered as well as casualties here but they're also kind of disorganized which makes it harder to send a real line forward so if the Carthaginians start forming up a line Rome's gonna have to pause and do the same and that'll allow whatever's in the back to withdraw 
if they don't form up a line, Rome can just charge forward without really worrying too much about it. All right, I'm going to stop and come back a little bit later. Not too much later, I counted up the uh, casualties for the turn. Not a lot here, but Rome took 21, tactical quality Carthage 17. Carthage only needs 100, Rome needs 215. So, obviously, you know, Rome can afford the losses that maybe Carthage cannot. I'll put those away. The Velites over here on the Roman left uh, took an action. This actually required the Tribune because Marcius is kind of in the wrong place now. He can't command the line that was over here. Uh, mixed results. You see some gaps, some Velites running, but they did get an outflank. They did chase a couple of uh, Carthaginians off in that direction. And they really need to get this line out of the way so they can push through just as they're kind of close to doing here. The Romans need to get moving. They can't let the Carthaginians get these forces off the map without having to set them up at least. Well, the Romans have pretty much completed and broken the entire uh, medium infantry line that was sitting on this hill. Bostar have made an attempt to trump a momentum and failed. A felt like he was a safe choice for that because he doesn't really have a lot he can do. If he could have acted, yes, he could rally some forces in the front and slow things down, but it doesn't look like he had a really high value uh, position, and if he could have stopped that advance a little bit there, in addition to strengthening his own forces, that would have been a huge bonus. Uh, giving one up, though, didn't seem too terrible compared to the possible payoff. What's important is what happens up here, and I didn't want to risk it by getting rid of him or reducing his chances uh, by trumping over him of getting a momentum roll because he may want to push those troops and get them into a line up here. Not surprisingly, I screwed things up a bit and forget about a couple of the Roman cav officers back here. Uh, they've taken their actions. Really, uh, rallying didn't go too well at all, yeah, but some counterattacks, they cleared away some of their opposition. And they're basically looking for a couple of their units that have been outflanked to be knocked out of the way. They were hoping to get another continuation, knock this guy away and save this guy temporarily, maybe, I don't know. They've routed a couple of the uh, Carthaginian units, some of them, well, one of them, uh, to death. And now I think, depending on how much you want to deal with what I screwed up there, I think it's Laelus's turn. He's got to figure out what to do. He's got sort of an open path forward if he can get together troops. And he's got a decent line of regulars here. They're not in great shape. Uh, or he's got the faster Velite who could rush forward and maybe uh, harass the, uh, the routed units. The Velite's problem is that they probably, they don't look like they can be done in a line easily. One, two, three, four. See, they're too curved, whereas these are pretty straight, except for once you get to this Velite here, but he'd be able to command this line. And in fact, he'd be able to command this entire line back here, but that's a different issue. All right, let's see what he does. So he moved forward with the uh, main line units. He was hoping to get a continuation, push the Velite forward, he did. Masinissa ended up trumping him, so we're going to move back to the cav, and that takes the initiative out of this sector and prevents Laelis from, you know, really getting the kind of pursuit he wanted. Now I found I did the same thing with Marcius, uh, forgot to move him, um, and his forces have more or less cleared away. There's just one remaining light infantry in the way. He wasn't able to do a line command at all. He's got these Velites mixed in with his line and it creates a great big problem. He's trying to reform a line up here of the uh, Hastarti primarily into something that can be launched forward. Uh, right now though, that's not quite the case. One unit's kind of aiming the wrong way here, another one here. So it's really hard once your line starts degenerating into a little bit more chaotic uh, formations. The problem with me keeping track of which leaders I have is that the Roman command is not the standard Roman command. I'm used to looking at 
the uh, Carthaginians and trying to figure out each unit individually. But with the Romans, I'm very used to, ah, oh, there's two twos, two threes, you know, <laughs> or maybe four threes or whatever, but I know where they are. This one's a very mixed, uh, a, a different, different command structure in terms of the numbers on the leaders, et cetera, that I'm used to seeing. And it's just kind of throwing me off. And it's probably having some effect on the game, certainly. Uh, Marquette, Kellis probably would have been trumped earlier in the turn, and he wasn't at this point, although actually maybe there was less to lose for the Carthaginians to trump him when he did. He didn't have a lot to command, so it wasn't too big a deal. It didn't seem worth the risk. Uh, all we're left with now are the big guys. Uh, what, Hamilcar, or Hasdrubal, sorry, Hasdrubal and uh, Scipio. Well, Scipio was unable, uh, he did some rallying, but then moved up here to try to launch a, a pursuit. He was unable to get that going, and the Carthaginians are running. Um, you know, this means that they're going to get a chance to rally those and try to get them off the map. So far, nothing's left yet. Uh, see, other big hunk of the army running here. Rome's got some running, and some of their cav, of course, is, is heading as well. Let's take a look at the points here. We got 21 more Roman points. And for Carthage, we're at 2030. Which means, you know, Carthage is beginning to see the signs of the numerical superiority at this point. I don't, I don't know how easy, I, you know, before I was saying I don't know how easy it's going to be for the Romans to catch the Carthaginians. I don't know. They, press hard and I think that they can tie this down heavily enough. Now, if Scipio never gets momentum, <laughs> that's going to be tough to do. But, you know, if the Romans just kind of ignore the troops that they lose running, they don't need to worry about them. What they want to do is focus on destroying that army. I'm going to load this one up and uh, switch videos for the next one.